Hubbard, and you're watching Backyard Body Works. Happy Thursday. I'm Robert. You are watching Backyard Body Works. Uh, the parts are not here yet. They should, uh, according to DHL, they will be here by end of day tomorrow, which is Friday, which I doubt they're, they're, that'll be the case because they still got to go through customs. And I'm assuming that when I checked this morning, they were on their way from England to the International Airport, which is right outside of town. So my thing is they'll get here tonight, they'll go through customs, maybe tomorrow, and be here Monday. That's that's my thought. If they come here tomorrow, I'll be surprised. So in the meantime, what we're going to be working on is this door opening. I am actually going to be working on the door that goes in here and taking all the parts out of the old door and um, prepping the, the new door to go into this space and trying to fit it. So... Uh, Thanks for stopping by the shop, and we'll go ahead and get to work on that, and we'll, that will be our little side project for while we're waiting on parts, so let's get to it. for day because it is really hot. We are, I can't imagine what August is going to be like if it's this hot now. Anywho, I've got the door in and uh, the gaps look pretty good. I'm, I like this door much better than the other door. It's still a little tight back here in the back but I found that if I lift the door up slightly because the that crease that runs down the bottom of the door if I lift it up like say a millimeter then the gap is fine and the gap is fine back here because it it rotates in the gap is good up here and the gap is good along here now the trick is going to be when the new stuff gets here and I start fitting the the inner sills and the lower a post and the rocker panel or the outer sill and how those gaps are going to mesh together once I start putting all that stuff in. So I don't know if I'm going to leave the door in or not. Um, I will probably take the door out to put the inner, the floor pans and the inner sills in. And uh, then I will put the door on and measure everything to put the outer sills and the, the rockers in. So. We're going to call it for today, and uh, I will see you guys. Let's see, today is Thursday. Tomorrow will be Friday. I'll see you tomorrow uh, when the parts get here, and we'll inventory that. So y'all have a good day. Until then, bye. Hey, everybody. 
Today is Friday, and I got a surprise today. My floor pans, sills, and other parts are here. This is Fragile. What is that, Italian? Oh well. Anyway, we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna inspect the parts, and make sure that we got everything. And uh, man, it's like, it's, like, it's like about once a month or every two, three weeks, it's like Christmas around here. There's just all, always a, something new to unbox and go, ooh. Let's get to it and see what we got. Parts are, the parts are here. I've got them laid out. You know, I've done a test fit to each other, and all the parts are, you know, they fit together perfectly. I am very pleased with, you know, how some uh, after, just just an inkling of what I'm talking about. Some aftermarket parts are, are crap. Just to show you what I'm talking about, that is the Motor Heritage approved sill outer suit and it's got the you got the flange and everything that we need for the the, the whatever that filler piece is uh, it's got the hole the drain holes drilled in it already this is an aftermarket piece that I bought on eBay and all it is is an 18 gauge steel that somebody built bent on they they cut out a template and See, this has got the inner sill here. See, that has nothing. And nothing to weld to. So you're just supposed to fabricate it, I guess. And, you know, there's nothing up front here to weld to. And plus, you know, it's not completely curved there. So, that piece is crap. You know, I think I paid 20 bucks for it. And I am so glad that I spent the money and got that piece there. Because I think that's going to make all the difference in how this repair looks. Um, so guys, be careful about the parts that you buy. Um, if you're doing, you know, some restoration work and you know how to fabricate, awesome. People like me, uh, who's fabrication skills are less than say you know 50% I'm 50% of the time I get it right that right there versus that right there is gonna make all the difference in this repair because of the number one the shape the quality of the construction um, the fact that it is probably made from the original die pieces if it's a motor heritage approved I guarantee you that's what they they they've, they either have the original presses or they've made them to spec back to, you know, they've made the factory presses that they need to make these pieces. I am very pleased with the construction and I think it's gonna to go together really nice to make a really nice repair. The question is, is, am I going to be able to cut out the necessary pieces to make sure that, you know, all this fits like it should? I just kind of wanted to uh, kind of commentary on you know parts parts construction and I think I believe when you have good quality parts you have good quality repairs just remember that you get what you pay for so without further ado uh, we're gonna get started to assessing or not assessing but actually uh, measuring out the floor and we're gonna go ahead and start cutting out the floor and getting the floor ready to put in. Let's get to it, shall we? Hey guys, I was uh, I was just laying here 
and just looking up underneath the car. Sorry about the fan, but it's just too freaking hot. I hope you, hopefully you can hear me over the fan. I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm looking at the floor pan and I'm looking up underneath here and I'm just trying to figure out where to cut. What I'm thinking about doing so that I have good metal all around is right along in here is where, is where this pit piece meets this piece. And I was thinking about cutting it right along here in this valley till I get to right here and then just meeting up with the cut that I've already made here. So if I make my cut along that, along this line here and then meet it up with this and then, you know, and then grind this back smooth, you know, and then, you know, it'll, it'll probably meet somewhere up in here where I don't have to do any cutting because that's part of the transmission tunnel lip. And then, of course, over there where it meets the bulkhead and across there, I was planning on cutting right there. And I think the floor will just, it'll just fit in. So that's what I'm looking at is finishing up my cuts to get the rest of this floor out and to start fitting the new floor in. This is gonna be extensive and you know, I don't wanna, I don't want you guys to miss anything because I consider this an important and structural repair. So I would rather include more content and split it up into several videos than just make one 20 minute video of the whole entire process of putting floor sills and the door panel back in and say, oh, look what I did. I'm more interested in you guys having a visual representation or a guide to help you do similar repairs. So I want to contribute back to the community or to the collective knowledge that in making good repairs. Let's go ahead and get to work. got the floor pan out, at least that front part. This is what I was talking about in the last video. There's, you can see it much better now, is the plate that was welded in. I mean, it's that's that must be almost a quarter, quarter inch thick. Yeah, I mean, it's quarter inch steel. It's welded in right there, and it's welded down through here and up through here. So, and you can see the break there. So that cross member will definitely have to be replaced at some point. Now, there's the corner right there of the floor pin that's going to go in here, right? See the corner there? That is this piece right here. This piece is not on that piece. And I need to figure out, I just need to cut the floor piece off of this piece and either take it off of the bulkhead and weld it to the floor pan or leave it where it is and weld the floor pan to it, which is probably what I'll end up doing because this piece is not welded in. I mean, it's original and that hole's not gonna change. So that hole is a fixed point. So we'll probably just go ahead and leave that where it is and try and get this floor piece off. Just, you know, keep cutting until I can get it off and then um, we will weld the floor to this piece here. And, uh, and as you can see, I've left a lip up there that I can weld to, just needs to be cleaned off. And uh, we'll get it all figured out. Well, it's almost quarter to five. Whew. God, it's hot. So, 
we're going to continue on for a little bit and then we're going to call it quits because I want to go inside and get a shower, get clean, blah, 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 blah. cut it up for today it's 5 30 and I've got pretty much most of the floor out that uh, that I'm gonna get out today and now I've got this big huge hole that I've got to fill but fear not so let me show you what we've got okay I have cut I've left a lip along this bulkhead and this piece I'm gonna grind this down just a little bit to smooth it out I'm going to use that, since it's attached to the bulkhead, I'm going to use that as a guidance. Because I think the hole is the hole drilled in this. No, it is not. So, I'll probably drill from beneath then. Just come up through that hole and drill it in. So, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I've left this right here. I've cut here. And those two holes there correspond with those two holes over there and then it goes out and then it cuts in right there which should be I would measure all of that and transfer that to here if not lay this on top of all this and just kind of trace around it you know either with a nail or you know something to etch the scratch you know the position of that into this and uh, then, once that's done, I can cut this to match that. And what I'll end up doing is I will probably I will probably scratch a line along that, scratch it along here, and then cut like a half inch below that, and use that to to plug weld to or to lap joint. Uh, I haven't decided yet. So I've got all this cut out, and I, like I said I was going to do, I cut out the lip here, and I'm going to use that. I'm just going to butt that right up under, you know, grind this down a little bit, and just butt that right up against this, and then just weld it in. And. Uh, same thing with using it, where that lip is back there, where it curves up. It should curve up right about in here somewhere. And what we'll do is we'll cut further over than we have to, and we'll flange it, and we'll use it to make plug welds, and that way it's nice and smooth. Um, like I've always said, that's the plan. The plan, of course, is subject to change at any time without notice and is never known. Flying in, no, I'm not flying in the dark because I know what I'm doing. We will try to follow the plan as closely as possible, but we might get into this and the plan needs to change. The plan is adaptable, adaptable, yes. The plan is adaptable. But we've got a, we've got a rough outline of what we want to do and where we want to go and how we want to do it. So. That being said, it's time to call it a day, and I will see you guys tomorrow, Saturday. Hey guys, today is Saturday, <clears throat> and uh, we are gearing up for more work out here, replacing the, the floor. Now, what I also did is I went to Lowe's and I got a turnbuckle, because I'm not happy with this gap here. And what I'm thinking is that over the years, because this this has been so rusted, that this, I am going to use this right here. I'm gonna cut a section out and I'm gonna weld this in place. I saw that on one of uh, Chris Fisher's videos. He had a turnbuckle 
in his door gap and he was using that to kind of adjust the gap back and forth. And since I've got all this stuff out, this is free. Uh, I was thinking that maybe I could use a turnbuckle to kind of widen the gap down here because it's, it's wide here and it's narrow here. And I've tried adjusting it here on the hinges. And it's, I just think that the, uh, the gap is a little off. So I'm gonna kind of use this to kind of help with the, the door gap a little bit. And because I'm not welding anything in until I have all the pieces fitted. That includes the floors, the sills, everything's gonna get held together with screws. <clears throat> and then I'm going to, uh, as I build from the, out, from the inside out, I'm gonna use this turnbuckle to kind of adjust the door gap until I'm happy with it. And then I will screw everything in place and I'll check all my gaps. And then if I'm happy with it, then we'll weld it all in. So let's get to work. And uh, thanks for stopping by the shop. We're glad to have you as always. And just sit back and enjoy. Wanted to show you something real quick. Let me get up off the floor. Behold. I know the floor pan's not welded in, but I do have it uh, placed in. roughly placed in you know I've got clamped down there and I got clamped up here in the front and I've got the uh, you know the outer seal clamped to the uh, to that but I wanted to show you guys this I thought this was really something I haven't seen this car like this since I bought it and of course I, I've never seen it you know without you know, rusted rockers but I mean look at that Got a nice line right there in the front. Got nice lines right there on the door jam. Now it's tight as it goes towards the back. I think that's because the A post is tilted in just a little bit and it needs to be pushed out, which is why I bought this. Uh, Chris Fisher in one of his videos had, when he was doing the driver's side, I believe, had a turnbuckle on the support piece that went across the door frame or the door opening 
And I thought that was ingenious. As far as, you know, you know, setting the door gap, because you can adjust this by, you know, by turning this middle piece and it would spread apart opening up that door that door frame and see I've got the 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 crossbar is right at that line right there and so I was thinking I was going to cut the crossbar and weld this into place and therefore being able to adjust that door gap tighter or wider based on what I need to do now this is of course before I weld anything into place. It's going to be either screwed in or uh, yeah, it's going to be screwed in. I'm not going to I'm not going to tack anything in. It's just going to be held together like I did with the bonnet. I'm just going to drill holes, put my screws in to hold it in place. And um, what I'm hoping is that you know that I don't have to use this. That once I get everything settled into place, that the gaps are going to everything's going to even out. So I'm still going to fix that rear wing and put a new rear wing in. And I think that because it's rotten in the bottom, that it's lost its shape and therefore it's, that's why it's tight. So I want I want to at least try to do that before I get anything welded in place. So I think it looks really good, guys. I am very pleased. It's nice. So. I'm going to call it a day. Um, you guys have a, a good night, and we will be back tomorrow. We're going, which tomorrow? Tomorrow is Sunday. So we will be back tomorrow, and we will be fitting the inner sill and the strengthener piece in place and cutting out that rear wing and getting that and the inner B post taken care of. So uh, y'all have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow. Welcome back to the shop. It is Sunday and we are getting ready to fit in the floor. Let me show you what we've done so far. I have scored the top edge of where the floor sets. Uh, along this line right here is where the floor sets on the tunnel. Now around here it doesn't really matter because this is all cut out. I fitted this, I've ground this down, and this is ready to go here. The next step will be to cut along this edge here and create a rough opening for the floor to set in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a rough opening about a half inch outside of the line, you know, in this side of the line, down through here, down through here and back to here. I'm very happy with the fit, so we're going to go ahead and proceed with prepping the, you know, the tunnel to receive the floor. And so everything's got, just like the bonnet, everything has to work together to, to make one single unit. So, and that is right in here, in this area. Uh, I've noticed several people having some problems behind this piece. So I've also scored this out according to that piece down there but I'm not I can't put really put that piece in until I have the floor in which gives me this bottom lip uh, to uh, to mate to and then we have this piece back here that needs to be free and I have left this curve here so that I can so I can make a patch here that will fit in this little corner here Anyway, let's go ahead and get started and we will go ahead and get everything prepped up to receive the floor.
going to conclude this week's video. So we got a lot accomplished this week. All the parts for the repair have arrived. We've gotten fitted, you know, rough fitted in, and we have started fitting the floor in. There are some places along that rear bulkhead that need to be repaired before the floor actually goes in. We'll start uh, those repairs in the next video. Thanks for stopping by the shop. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you like the content, by all means, give us a thumbs up. If you want to get alerted every time that we upload a video, either this project, the GT6 project, or any of the other projects that we're doing, click the notification bell and that will alert you every time that we upload a video. Take care and we will see you next video, which I will start. We will see you next video. Goodbye. Thank you.